What are you doing? What is it now, Ines? I told you I was going to protect you. Right. And yet, whenever an enemy shows himself, you rush in and attack. Everyone's going to think you're the one protecting me. Well, I can't help you with your image problems, Ines. Fire Emblem isn't always about thrilling tales of dragons, castles, royal brats saving the world, sitting on big comfy chairs, or fawning over this Kaga guy. And I mean, most of the time it is, but if you look at this series as a big old thing, you might miss some of the smaller moments of the writing that can also make this series so fun and memorable. Not only are Fire Emblem characters proficient in fighting, but some of them are so especially skilled in delivering insults so destructive that not even Hubert's plot armor can save them. This video is about snappy one-liners, zingers, and burns. There's not much commentary to make on these, so let's just sit back and enjoy these Fire Emblem dunks. Warning though, this video will contain spoilers for Radiant Dawn and Shadows of Valentia. Okay, to be honest, there are so many sick burns in the Tellia saga that it's actually hard to pick and choose the best ones, so I'm just going to make a section dedicated to the crap that Ike, Har, Renolf, and others tell their enemies. Everyone should know Oliver at this point. He's a delusional elite of Begnon who unironically thinks he's a symbol of peerless beauty. Everyone hates him, especially the Lagoos after he buys off Brayson from Nesala. I don't really know if he's uniquely a gag character, as many of the Begnon Senate act in the same way as in their all pomp pompous delusional freak shows that everyone hates, but he's comic relief in Path of Radiance, at the very least. Him and the rest of the Senate are the target of many of the best burns that Tellius has to offer. Part of the reason why Ike is so revered has to do with his personality. He's cool, level-headed, and gets straight to the point. Not one to let his emotions overwhelm him, it was certainly different to see Ike do this when confronting Oliver. You low-born, vulgar, penurious vermin. Return my little bird to me. Objects of beauty must be admired. Only by my side can they fulfill their purpose for which they are created. I am so tired of listening to your nonsense, you massive gas bag. This ends here and now. Not to be outdone, Radiant Dawn also loves dunking on the Bangyan elite. And even though Oliver has turned a new leaf and fights with Ike now, or more accurately, for the protection for his beloved herons, the Senate takes digs at him regardless. Seferin, the Prime Minister of Bengyan, has been actively trying to awaken Ashura to cast judgment upon the continent by inciting what is essentially World War. He is all about the end of the world for personal reasons dating back like 1,000 years. Anyway, Seferin knows Oliver, and like literally everyone else, has a very, very low opinion of this diluted, blinged out purple marshmallow. Duke of Tannis, imagine seeing you here. Lord Seferin, as lovely as always, but has it come to this? Must we fight to the death, and deprive the world of one of our beautiful countenances? Can other lovers of beauty endure such a loss? I confess that your presence has me bewildered. Could this be part of Yune's plan? I simply never would have imagined you here. Your presence proves that Tellius is unraveling at the seams. Judgment cannot come soon enough. Damn. Imagine your betrayal baffling the bad guy so much he says, I've planned the end of the world for centuries and even I can't comprehend this. I would hazard a guess that Seferin was only being kinda serious, as this was clearly a savage dig, but taking the piss out of the Ashura situation and the Senate is something that several allies do, like Ronolf towards Valtome. The so-called queen, where is this brazen little hussy? Bring her before me, now, right away, immediately. Are you the best that Ashura could do? This really is the end of the world. Ike and Har have an absolute field day tearing into the senators of Bengyan but arguably the spiciest lines are against Lacane. Lacane is responsible for the assassination of Misaha, the Serenace Forest Massacre, taking control of the Senate and tricking Peleus into signing the Blood Pact, binding Day into his whims, and he thinks he runs the show. But really, he has no idea about much of anything. He and the rest of Ashura's most devoted disciples come to the tower and face off against the heroes as basically representatives of the goddess. Which is, uh... Not the best look for her, to say the least. Laughable mercenaries. Sanaki could certainly have chosen better allies. If only she had sided with me. She wouldn't be damned now. Yeah, whoever chose you as an ally has had better days too. So who is it? Who's pulling your strings? Pulling my strings? What are you saying? I alone have been chosen to protect her. 
I masterminded the plan to resurrect the goddess and become Ashura's chosen one. It is my right, mine alone. Really, I didn't see you around when the Galder of Release was sung to the medallion. What medallion? What nonsense are you talking about? Wow, you don't have any idea what's going on, do you, mastermind? I'm just wasting my time. Yeah, so much for being a mastermind when he actually doesn't know how anything works. Would definitely suck being the highest ranking senator behind Seferin but not even knowing about the medallion whatsoever. He's like a batter that hits nothing but fouls. Ike essentially nexted him. Why is it that authority figures are always so unwilling to let go of their power? The world could flip upside down and you'd be trying to boss around gravity. You clearly know nothing of me, lout. To oppose me is to oppose the goddess Asherah herself. That's strange. I always thought the world was filled by the Apostle. But who can keep up these days? So you're defending the goddess. But will she do the same for you? Har's comeback is... cold, man. He's so casual in his delivery, and that ending line is just devastating. Asking him this rhetorical question, when the truth is he is beyond redemption and will not be looked upon with charity by Ashura, especially considering that Seferin is literally Leron and Lacane is the guy who killed the only person that gave him faith in humanity, basically. Also, that bossing around gravity comment? That is a zinger. Finally, leave it to Bastion, the guy who speaks like Shakespeare, to deliver the most eloquent death threat I've ever seen. I have some knowledge of anatomy. Once you are dead, perhaps I will dissect your brain and see if I can identify the root of your intelligence. You monster, what you suggest is unconscionable. Exactly, yet you had no hesitation before doing worse to the Lagoos. I will speed you now to the afterlife, where you may contemplate your life's egregious mistakes. Tellius is legitimately a treasure trove of verbal beatdowns, and I'm leaving out a lot in favor of some other zingers I like from other games. Let's focus on some support conversation burns. Owain and Inigo. These two Gen 2ers have traveled to the past with Lucina to try to change the outcome of the current conflict in their parents' timeline. Owain, son of Lyssa, is widely known for his eccentricity. He greatly enjoys playing up this extremely heroic character and has a wild imagination. Naming weapons and super special moves. Like a teenage boy running in the backwoods, grabbing a stick and breaking branches off trees pretending he's fighting monsters. Inigo is Olivia's son and he's a sassy yet smooth talker to the ladies. Although, as his archetype goes, his success rate is pretty lousy. They both have goofy personalities that are easy to make fun of, to say the least. In the sea support, Owain is practicing his cool attack names when Inigo snidely remarks on the childish nature of the activity. Owain tells him to screw off. Sigh. Okay, just stop. You're not even sighing. You're just saying the word sigh. Maybe that's why all those girls keep turning you down. You're guaranteed to lose 100% of the jousts you never attend, my friend. Perhaps you should name your next move Eternal Chastity. Sure, why not? I've got the perfect teacher for it right in front of me. Sorry, Inigo, but you just got destroyed by the guy who just got done yelling Radiant Dawn like an attack in Dragon Ball. First he called you fake, then he came back calling you an incel. Maybe Owain can yell Icy Thimblevetter to help his buddy recover from that burn. Veda and Wallace. Veda is an old wyvern general of Burn who is now fighting for Elliewood as thanks for protecting Prince Zephiel. Wallace is an old retired general of Kaelin who is accompanying the heroes, specifically Lynn, as they campaign to bring peace to the world. One takes to the skies, one commands forces from the ground. And they're both insanely stubborn, prideful, and competitive. Literally their entire support chain is just tearing into one another trying to prove their superiority. It's a shallow yet hilarious chain that I'm just here for. Ah, that pathetic gaggle of weak countries and what does Sir Scrub Knight want with me? We are not so unruly as to forget our duty for a personal vendetta, no matter how worthy. What? Are you chicken? Listen, wench. Perhaps you would like to show me your prowess in the same way? Unless you are afraid I will show you up. There you are, you bald old fossil. Still smarting from our competition? Bald old fossil. You spitting cobra. Are you trying to make me share in your bitterness at being so soundly defeated the other day? Wishful thinking, teapot. You were no prize on the battlefield. I saw you poke each unit one by one with your little needle the whole thing took ages. Well, all I saw was a big lump of grey flesh floating about in the sky and belching on occasion, and your wyvern wasn't much better. 
Finally, here's a nod to Shadows of Valentia. Fernand is a land-holding lord and a founding member of the Deliverance, a group of noble knights and commoners led by Clive formed in response to Desai's military coup in Zofia. He used to be a good noble, but when the common folk rose against his family estate because they claimed that the higher class were hoarding resources for themselves, they rebelled, and his family was unfortunately killed. Enter Alm, a teenager from Ram Village who has continuously proven his worth to Clive, Lucas, and the rest of the Deliverance nobles present. The Deliverance is honestly going south, and Clive makes the executive decision to keep up with the recent string of positive victories led by Alm and to make him the leader of the Deliverance. He also justifies this choice by hearkening back to Mycin, Alm's grandfather, who was also a commoner but became a legendary knight in Zofia. Lucas was the one to recruit Alm and his friends in the first place. The kind-hearted and soft-spoken Ginger Stud is a pretty professional guy. He is cool as a cucumber. The decision to make Alm the leader is certainly a bold move and arguably short-sighted, but even Lucas agrees with Clive's choice. Fernand, though, he's very upset that a commoner is now leading an army started by the nobility. Clive has done all he can to hold the Deliverance together thus far. But if our ship is astray, then we must chart a new course. Alm is that course. I'll rip that traitorous tongue from your throat! Then you'll finally have the truth in your grasp. I lost friends at the Southern Outpost. Veteran men, yet dead all the same. I will never not love Lucas for this one line. You can argue whether or not Clive was too hasty in throwing in a rookie like Alm as a figurehead, but you cannot deny that Deliverance needed to change. Their hideout was like a fucking crypt, basically. Fernand is in denial. He's blinded by his views of class, skill, and is too resentful to see otherwise, even though it isn't baseless. And Lucas told him in the realest way possible. Finally, uh, remember when Leon and Matilda were deployed in the final map of this game? Your fetish for power is simply barbaric. Where's the joy, the love? Your perfect world is as dull as dirt. I alone will decide who I choose to worship. But I can promise you one thing, it certainly won't be you! I no doubt missed a bunch of other lines. So if there are any burns or insults that you can think of, feel free to comment down below. If you're still watching though, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. There's actually about a third of viewers of this channel that haven't yet, so I'd really appreciate it. Deuces. Thank you.